buonasera a tutti. So, good evening. Welcome to the Italian Cultural Institute. Thank you for joining us uh, in the pouring rain, I think. Um, and thank you for coming tonight for this event dedicated to architecture and design. Um, this uh, talk is actually part of a series of talks that we have been uh, organizing for some months and labeled as architecture, projects, territory and relations, trying to embrace and include some different themes and issues related to this very interesting and stimulating uh, field. Tonight we are very honored to present actually a preview on the exhibition design project of the new National Museum that will open in a few days. We are all thrilled to discover and to visit it, and so we are very excited to present this conference and actually very proud uh, to talk about the Italian contribution to it and to introduce our guests, Marco Magni and Cristina Rizzelli. Please, thank Welcome. you. Thank you for, for coming. Thank you for... Thank you very much for accepting our invitation to come and share your work here in Oslo. Uh, I will just briefly introduce them. Marco Manni and Cristina Rizzello from the Wicciardini and Manni Architetti, which is a prestigious team, um, I would say in Italian excellence in the field. They are based in Florence and involved in many cultural heritage projects at different scales within the fields of architecture, architectural restoration, music, museum exhibition design and interior design. Uh, since 1990, they have realized more, more than 50 museums and 80 temporary exhibitions, both in Italy and abroad. Uh, in Turkey, at the Topkap Palace in Istanbul. Uh, in France, at the Bibliothèque, Galerie et Musée Richelieu in Paris. And of course in Florence, at the Opera del Duomo Museum and Bargello Museum, just to mention some of them. Uh, they have been working on this project in Oslo for six years, so I will leave the floor to you so you will give some insights on this amazing project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to be here and uh, thank you Raffaella and the Italian Institute of Culture for inviting us to have a short talk. Uh, we will tell about our experience here in Oslo, starting from uh, how this experience was uh, starting. And uh, I would like to mention uh, a very short memory of uh, myself being in Oslo something like 35 years ago as a student, as an architecture student. I was uh, in Oslo uh, in the summertime for a few days visiting the town and uh, the uh, National uh, Museum and uh, also the Munch Museum and also the museums and uh, the Vigilan Park. It was a very impressive stay, but of course Oslo has changed a lot since that time. It's a completely different town, a new town in a way, and uh, I hope this new museum, the new National Museum, which is sort of a new museum in fact, will help to achieve another step towards a, a very interesting level of cultural uh, heritage for the town and for the community. So, when I was in Oslo 35 years ago, I didn't have any idea that in a few years I would take care of uh, museum projects, museum architecture and museum exhibition design. It was a sort of uh, coincidence, in a way, for me to start this kind of studies and uh, approach, which was due uh, to some passions I shared with my companion uh, uh, Piero Guicciardini, and uh, we both were very interested in applied arts, in uh, architecture, but also in photography, myself, in design, in scenography, Piero, 
And so putting together these uh, different interests, we came to be involved in some projects many years ago. These projects became bigger and bigger and more relevant, and uh, we had the chance to measure our capabilities with uh, many historical arts, especially in Florence and Tuscany. And so this is the way how we acquired a very slow expertise in this kind of works. Uh, when uh, the Oslo tender was uh, starting in 2016, we had just completed the Museo Opera del Duomo in Florence, which was uh, considered a good example of a sort of new muse museography. In fact, uh, uh, it is a way uh, that uh, we had started many years ago through smaller achievements, and uh, which we developed at its best way in that museum, I can say. Museo dell'Opera del Duomo di Firenze puts together different masterpieces of uh, Renaissance time in, in a new way of uh, considering the idea of a museum. Italian architects are convinced that uh, museography was, uh, is partly a uh, fruit of uh, Italian uh, inventions and uh, design throughout the 20th century. But uh, it's not really like that. Italians were very uh, good designers. They had uh, acquired a lot of competencies in restoration field and uh, in exhibition design, thanks to the works of people like uh, Scarpa or uh, Albini or a BBPR group in the 50s and 60s and 70s. They made incredible achievements. But at the same time, we are talking about a kind of museography which is very far from what a museum is nowadays. The museum we have uh, nowadays uh, is a, a different creature. It's a, an open uh, organism for the whole society, or it's saying to be like that, and not anymore a sort of uh, thematic and poetical uh, selective word for very few people, like it was uh, those times. So actually we learned a lot from Italian lessons, but also from uh, Anglo-Saxon world of museums. This is how we matured our experience. And during the time we were preparing the, the tender for Oslo, we had uh, published uh, uh, some articles about this, about which I'm going to read a very small part. About the kind of museum we, we like and we wish. The type of museum we believe in is a place of knowledge and exchange, development, cultural integration, education, study, and social interaction. The museum must be something unique in order to trigger interaction between the visitor, the place, and the artworks. Such interaction is the very thing that enables the visitor to get deeply involved so as to turn a collective cultural heritage into a personal experience. Museography is an exercise in mediation between different places, people and artworks. Museography must essentially create a realistic image on the basis of a corpus of exhibits, stories and architectures forging the exhibition narrative. Museography allows us to tell a story by means of exhibition design based on a cultural and educational project. Thus, it is a complex subject involving sensitivity, taste, and the sense of measure integrated with art, history, literature, architecture, design, graphics, cinema, photography, scenography, multimedia, advertising, and many other disciplines. Nowadays, the interpretation of a museum need, need, needs to combine conservation with many different functional requirements but it also has to cope with the increasing expectations from an ever more demanding audience. Today, the audience, the visitors, are an active part of an exhibition and no longer an external variable as it used to be. Human beings are actually at the very center of the new museum. So this was uh, uh, something we, we thought and we still think and which we try to develop in this new project for the National Museum, together with the museum experts, curators, directors, conservators, and people from the museum. And uh, now I think uh, I could tell something about this process, which was uh, 
actually long process, but very important one, based on sharing a lot of common values and discussing and find the best solutions through the dialogue. Dialogue was a very important part of this process. We had the chance to work with a marvelous group of uh, curators and experts and uh, to share many, many meetings with them throughout the, the time, throughout the years, I should say. We had hundreds of meetings and uh, we tried to acquire a common vision of many general but also specific aspects linked to the conservation issues, to the vision of history, to the vision of uh, modern design, to the vision of how a museum could be developed in a way or in another one. Altogether, we faced this enormous task of uh, creating a new exhibition design and a new interpretation for the museum to, be, to become. Uh, I think in Europe, it's very difficult to see something enormous like the task which was done here in Oslo because it happens to see that uh, museums are renewed, but uh, normally we are talking about a few rooms, a few sections. It's very difficult to find something of this uh, uh, scale. I mean, we are talking about uh, 88 rooms of different sizes in more than 10,000 square meters. We are talking about uh, a world of art and design which is developing across two floors, facing and going across so many subjects from antiquity to the present day, through applied arts to design, studio crafts, fashion, and then art in its different steps from antiquity to the present day. So it was, uh, I should say, an enormous task which had the pleasure to run and uh, the pleasure to run throughout this uh, very beautiful process about which we are very proud. I think one of the reasons why we were chosen, perhaps beyond uh, some work we had done, was uh, our attitude to listen and to uh, create a dialogue and a discussion about, uh, about uh, the sense, the meaning of what we are designing. We always avoided to make arrogant statements or unuseful uh, gestures. Whatever has been designed is the fruit of a reflection about uh, uh, the museum and its contents. So I think now we could uh, go to see some of the, uh, of the, of the, of the works we made and uh, to present you the, the team we worked with, uh, which was consisting of a few different companies, two different firms from Italy. We are Richard and Mani, but together with us was Massimo Iarussi, a lighting designer, very clever one who worked uh, in many different works with us and also without us in Italy and in France. And uh, for the graphic design, the revival design team, which is uh, due to arrive, maybe late, here to, together with us. And they made a wonderful job for the graphic design of uh, the rooms and uh, to comment the contents. And then for the multimedia aspects, we had uh, a French uh, professional consultant, who is Alain Dupuy in Novision, who worked on this field. Also with our idea, to integrate multimedia contents, this new way to approach the museum without, without covering the sound of uh, the real artworks, without invading or addressing uh, the meaning of uh, the original uh, artworks and their aura. So uh, Alain was with us uh, to this task. These are very simple concepts. We sketched at the very beginning of uh, the work about the interpretation of the specific meanings of the site and its cultural values. We never would like to design a museum without any relation to the site and a specific relation always. In all our works, we tried to emphasize the singularity of these works and of these sites. Interpretation of the new architecture of the museum. We were uh, given a new architecture 
most of the times we, in our previous works, we worked in historic architecture, so it's very rare to have uh, such a, a new building like this, but uh, we always considered the relationship between uh, interiors, exhibition design, and architecture very important. So in a way, our uh, work, our use of materials, always related to the given architecture. For example, in the use of uh, materials such as uh, the stone or the bronze, we will find in some rooms, we try to find an echo of uh, some materials you have in the architecture. Of course, we had to introduce a lot of different things because uh, the architecture is solid, is consistent, but uh, we had to deal, to deal with uh, a visitor, with human beings who need uh, to fight against uh, uh, boredom, against uh, tiredness during a museum visit. So we had to propose uh, a lot of different elements to uh, renovate their attention, their, uh, their curiosity, their involvement in the visit. This is the reason why we introduced so many different variations. And uh, the interpretation of specific meanings and values of the artwork be exposed. We studied the collection for a long time, together with uh, many other readings we had, and uh, we tried to enter and to, to learn from uh, a different culture how to give an answer about this. Correct understanding of the conservation matters about the artworks. Luckily, we had uh, large experience in uh, the exposition of uh, many different kind of uh, items and uh, objects, including textiles, metals, organic materials, and so on. So we knew the rules and the specifications which were necessary for the good conservation, which is at the basis of uh, many things, many works we have in the museum. How to protect an object, how to emphasize, but also how to conserve for the future generations. Creative, innovative definition of design according to the, curatorial, to the curator's vision. So, to give answers in a way that uh, has a sense, a meaning, also from a curatorial point of view. This was our task. Interpretative variations through lighting design, which is a very important part of uh, the, the museum, uh, design and which is uh, something which regulates the rhythm and uh, the focus of the visit. Variations in design to help the, vi the visitor's experience. And this means a lot of things I'm not going to go to explain in detail, but includes colors, shapes, and a lot of things which are changing throughout the parkour of the museum. Different levels of languages or to face different levels of communication. different tools of location and multimedia interaction. So we, we played all together with the museum, we played this challenge to innovate the museum rooms with uh, many in multimedia interventions, both in an interactive way or in an immersive way through the use of sound, through the use of uh, uh, many different uh, ways, but always with the intent to add contents, to add information and involvement for the visit. Full accessibility and easy of access for everyone, this was a very important task in our design. And together with the different types of diversity to be respected beyond physical disability. Educational goals and didactic programs, this also was a very important part uh, we developed a very, very intense program with the educational team of the museum, and uh, this is a part of the work we are very proud of. A part of the work which gave uh, shape to many rooms and to many details, proposing to the visit and to the use of uh, media, not only multimedia, but also physical medias, the possibility to play, the possibility to learn, especially for the for the kids, for the younger generations. General comfort in the whole museum, because the museum is a place where we must live, where we have to stay in peace and harmony, and uh, 
uh, we would like a museum where comfort is a part of the visit, where comfort is a part of the experience and not uh, in opposition to concentration or to contemplation. And uh, yes, here you can see the two floors of the museum, which is, uh, this is a preliminary sketch, but it shows the vastity, the largeness of uh, the intervention and uh, in a way the scale of it. We should jump this part. We should just jump, jump this part because the our graphic designer is not right yet. So we can just go very quick on this and we can start this journey inside the museum. Maybe some of you has already visited, uh, so this is more uh, an idea to tell, uh, to, to explain what is behind, but we will, uh, we will have, you will see some of the images. Uh, at the same time, we don't want to, uh, to give you too much and to <laughs> so there, there will be some surprise. Um, this is the, the first floor and um, it's mainly devoted to the design from the antiquity to the contemporary fashion. And uh, it's uh, a very articulated path through uh, like a journey actually um, and has a chronological order. Um, just simply seeing this uh, shape of the exhibition, you see a lot of small shapes that gives, give this idea of variety. Um, and this is one of, and also the colors. These are the colors that we have chosen for this floor uh, in accordance with the curators. We make a lot of tests to find the right colors. And we tried to find something that was related to the period, related to the, to the artworks. It was like also an interpretation of uh, the time uh, of the period. So um, everything starts with sketches. Sketches made by Marco, of course. <laughs> and, um, but for us, um, are like the first uh, light. Um, so we have this way to work um, and then we develop together uh, what is from this sketch to the reality. In this way, in this, in this um, way, we are able to, to share the ideas and to, uh, to, sh to share with the uh, with curators a first sketch and a first idea to talk about and uh, to develop the next steps. So from this, for example, now you can see the room one. This is like, uh, like a sum up of the speech that Marco did before because it's like uh, an explosion of pieces, like a mosaic. And uh, at at the beginning of the museum, we try to give immediately this idea that the visitor is in the middle of the museum, is in the center of the museum. So we decided to, to have this installation made um, with the sculpture, the Roman and Greek sculpture, like pieces that are not uh, together anymore. But you can see a light in the middle, and uh, if you are here, in the, you can see all the faces looking at you. So you are, uh, in that moment, the protagonist of the museum, and the art is, uh, di uh, is in dialogue with, with, with you, with the visitor. And so we used to to think about exhibition design in this way, to link uh, the visitor experience, the artwork, and to interpret what uh, the museum and curators want to express in this room through the art. These are sketches about uh, room two, which is uh, one of the rooms I liked more. All of them, actually, I like. But, uh, 
This one is about the history of uh, the National Gallery and uh, the National Museum was uh, established mainly in the second half of 19th century as a, a sculpture museum and uh, as a, a museum to propose uh, to, to the artists uh, classical models to learn from. And uh, this is a sort of uh, quotation of uh, that museum. This is room three. I don't know, we have 88 rooms, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe at the beginning we'll try to be more, uh, uh, we will go more in deep, than, but then it will be more fast. So this is room three that is mainly de de devoted to the medieval art. And there is a section of icons uh, that are living together. And uh, in a way, uh, the idea was to create a sort of ideal church because we have pieces from these tough church, churches, some of them doesn't exist anymore, and, uh, but we have an altar, we have uh, one of the most beautiful uh, carpets from the medieval time that is behind this, you cannot see uh, very well from this picture. Uh, so. Oh, we have the our graphic designer. <laughs> Steve, ciao. Hello. Ciao, Susanna. Please. Scusa. Moltissimo, buonasera. Then we will, we will see something more and then we can give you some, uh, some space. Mm -hmm. So this is the progress through the history of uh, ancient and old design and uh, some uh, special productions of it, which are very important for the history of uh, Nordic and Norwegian design, such as uh, the evolution of uh, ceramic and porcelain, such as the, the textile production, such as uh, the glass and silver. So into these uh, different uh, uh, fields and uh, typologies of products, we developed different ways to expose uh, the objects. Especially in this picture, you can see a bench behind the case that is like a small world for us. It was... Uh, not only a place where you can see it, but we try to, to condense other meanings in this bench. Uh, one, of course, is uh, to rest and to think and, to, and just to see what you have around, but it's also a moment where you can learn something. We uh, work very hard with the education, the curatorial educational, and uh, we try to, uh, to have a moment where uh, you can think, so there are like uh, uh, special philosophical cards that you can read and uh, uh, have some thoughts on, on the artworks that you find in, the, in that room. Or you can find um, uh, drawings or uh, games that you should <coughs> discover what they are, and uh, also for kids but also for others. Uh, so we try to to be uh, a bit more creative on on, the, on this idea of the benches, also having different uh, kind of seats for uh, young people, for people that needs uh, a bit of support to have. Uh, so we we try to be also uh, to have different uh, point of view on the comfort team. Um, these display cases, which are about 250, are very amazing products, which were uh, designed by us and developed by an Italian company later. The Gopion company won uh, the tender for the realization of the display cases, and uh, we are talking about uh, uh, a leading company in the, in, the, in the museum world. So 
maybe they will arrive, some of them will arrive later, but uh, we are very honored to, to have this uh, collaboration, which was independent in the full term from uh, our contribution, mm -hmm. but uh, which was very, very happy because they worked on so many typologies and it was very difficult to obtain such an result of uh, different qualities. This is uh, another word. This is uh, the art from uh, Far East and uh, Chinese and Japanese objects collection. And uh, as you can see also in the following photos, every, every kind, every group of uh, objects has been treated as uh, a proper installation. So we imagine different installations according to the contents. We never used uh, standardized uh, solutions, all the same for all the objects, but we tried during this uh, uh, work to interpret it in a way their soul. This room, for example, has a totally different uh, light and material. Every, the cases are uh, inside, there is uh, bronze, and uh, we use these backlit uh, solutions. Uh, that uh, has the idea of, uh, of a lamp uh, with uh, rice paper. So, and it's warmer than the other room. So you have this mystery of uh, East Asia, actually. Which is part of the attraction, the cultural attraction, which was uh, coming from uh, that world to Europe during the 19th and 20th century. <coughs> And this is about uh, 18th century art. And uh, this is another sketch of the, song of the many ones uh, I made. And uh, during our meetings with, uh, with, uh, with con con curators and conservators and also in the following days, it was very natural to, to find different proposals and solutions like this one. And uh, we came to Oslo one week every month, we were together in different meetings, many ones, and uh, at the meetings we participated, our team from design, with Susanna, with Massimo and uh, the others. Sometimes uh, we had groups with uh, uh, more than 10 designers here in Oslo and so many people from the museum. And uh, this was, these were wonderful occasions to collaborate and to know better each other. And these sketches were a media for this uh, sort of dialogue. In this case, we are talking about the glass, engraved glass collection. And uh, we imagined uh, to, to, to recreate a sort of a little temple, neoclassical temple, to contain all these different glasses. And uh, this temple, at the end, uh, took its shape like this, and uh, it's a sort of hymn to the, to the art of glass. And uh, it's, a sort of, uh, it's a sort of joyful uh, uh, way to call back that period. Now you can see the, uh, the glasses uh, all around, because they have, each one has a, its own story. So you can completely see uh, all the details. And in a way, it's a bit magic, because they, it seems that they are like a bit flying in the room. And the, the light from the bottom gives more uh, drama to the, to the engraves. And the engraves come up in a very wonderful way. Of course, there is always a risk when we try to imagine something uh, from the design to the realization can, can be completely different. But uh, I can say that sometimes the result is even better than we imagine. And uh, this is Soliloquen, one of the many period rooms uh, we had the pleasure to develop in a very professional way with curators and uh, conservators of the museum. This is also a room where we, we introduced uh, in, the, in this reproposition of uh, an authentic interior from uh, 19th century. It was a home which was uh, 
dismounted and demolished in uh, which was uh, nearby this area I think in Oslo and uh, its interiors are the original ones and uh, we introduced some multimedia contents to give the sense of the passing seasons and uh, hours of the day and also to create some uh, movement in the room. To simulate a dance because this is a board move. So with uh, with uh, Innovision and then with Marduit, that was the company that won the competition for the content of the multimedia installation. Uh, they realized this uh, scene of uh, dance that you can see through the, the glass, through the windows and through the mirrors. And you see some shadow, but you feel that this room, it was there for a reason. This is one of the renders, uh, just to show you an example. It's about uh, the uh, wool interior in the beginning of 20th century. Here the colors are uh, uh, less evident. This is a render of the many we made uh, uh, as a fruit of this uh, collaboration with the museum. So to give uh, a proper idea of uh, uh, the job to, to be realized before this was done, we created these simulations, which I think were very useful. And this is, uh, yes please, and uh, here we are in the uh, modern design. Uh, we have the pleasure to be with uh, Denise, our wonderful curator, and uh, we work so much together. And uh, this is one uh, of the rooms, of the many rooms which belong to this period, and which give uh, a new, a new way to interpret uh, design, thanks to Denise and uh, Scandinavian design, Norwegian design. The main room, I should say the core of uh, the ground floor, is perhaps room 21, where we have uh, a beautiful installation. This is a render. This is, uh, this, the next is a photo. And uh, in this uh, huge cases are contained, exposed, offer to the audience this uh, uh, very particular groups of objects which were studied one by one and uh, not only for the value of uh, aesthetic reasons but also for the links between them and uh, the culture which is behind them and uh, the link between the objects and the ideas, the graphics and uh, the world which rotated into, into this uh, uh, into these uh, periods around the objects and the industrial design. This is uh, another render. It's about uh, very. It's a, it's a sort of reflection we, we made about uh, nomad uh, architecture. It is a place where the visitor can stay, can stop, and uh, uh, can relax a little bit in the middle of uh, this uh, great sea of uh, design. And this is a picture which shows the construction of it months ago yes. in Italy. And this is one of the so many pictures we have uh, about this room, and uh, which Denise uh, will, will see very soon. And uh, you can see just a fragment of this room, but uh, it's a real dense landscape to, to explore. And every section is like a small universe of meaning and stories and uh, example of design. This is another very intense room for me. It's uh, dedicated to graphic design and uh, it's meant uh, to be offered to the audience like a sort of a library which uh, makes <coughs> possible a very flexible way to change and to present different uh, graphic works. And then uh, we slowly, slowly pass to the studio crafts and uh, the production of uh, artists with objects in the last uh, decades. This is uh, a room, room 30, about uh, fashion and especially Norwegian fashion, like Peter Dundas and the others who followed him on the international scene. And uh, it's a very, it's a very lively room to to, to visit. 
And then we have my favorite room, like I say. Mm -hmm. That is room 31, that is about the royal costumes and uh, the two queens. Uh, these are the sketches that Mark did at the beginning, and uh, they, we tried to express an idea. I remember that day when we studied this room, tried to say, okay, this should be a very special room because these two women are so strong, and uh, we should find a way to, to say something more than beautiful costumes. So we try to invent something. Uh, imagine that they they should face, they should look, uh, they should meet in an ideal world, or maybe actually they 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 did. And uh, this, the unconventional things is when you enter in the room, you see the back of the costumes because they are is like. You know, what we say about room one, this is in a way similar because when you are in the center of the room, you have the two queens and you can stay in the middle of two queens that are facing each other. And uh, the costume in the middle is the costume uh, that uh, was used for the ceremony of the coronation. So it's, uh, it's like uh, two women that are... Uh, look in the other, the future and the past, in a way. And we try to, to shape this room like um, around these two diamonds, because the two queens are like two precious stones. And um, in a way, we try to com communicate this through the shape of the case. Of course, these are very complicated cases, and uh, for Bupion was a, very challenging to build it, but we were so uh, enthusiastic of this uh, idea, and uh, the curator also was so pleased that uh, we fight to obtain. And I think that I mean the result is amazing. And uh, around these two diamond, we have the other costumes, and there is a small section uh, with the shoes, and the bags uh, belongs to mainly to. Uh, to Queen Maud, they're incredible. Now, uh, I would like Susanna. Susanna Weber is with us, and uh, uh, she, together with Stefano Rovai and uh, their team, worked on the graphic design of the rooms, the expositive rooms in the museum. I would like to tell us something about it. <coughs> Hello, and again, I apologize for our delay, but our flight was late, and we are just arrived from Italy. Um, I, I don't know, I don't think I would like to talk about what we did in the rooms, as maybe you will all visit, I hope you will all visit the museum and you will uh, see this directly. I would just very quickly tell some, remind, us about the very beginning, the beginnings of the building up of the process, as we met um, at first in 2016, and we started this uh, conversation with curators about how the museum would look like, uh, and what were we all supposed to do. And the whole process started with, um, Somehow, a sort of brief we received from the museum and about the four, which are not those yes, ones, these no. are the sections of the museum, but I don't think you have this. I just would like to okay. remind the four keywords which we received. How should this museum look like in 2022? or whenever it would uh, open. And this was the beginning of uh, the discussion in, at that time. And so we had four words. The museum should be generous, should be playful, should be knowledge knowledgeable, and should be brave. And this was the beginning. Now, um, I think that at least four of these words have a lot of 
a lot to do with the uh, museum design and with the graphics as a consequence. Um, the museum should be generous. This means that um, no museum, any museum without graphics would never be generous, as graphics is the a starting point of the dialogue between the museum and the visitors. So graphics is somehow the way to, for the museum to, um, to uh, express contents in a visual and in a textual way. So, and let's say that this museum has been, as far as I can say, is extremely generous as we had a lot of contents to be, to be somehow um, position, positioned in, in the rooms in m many uh, ways and, uh, and uh, levels. Um, the museum, the other key word was the museum should be playful. I think the, by this word, the idea would say, would meant uh, the museum should be a space where an interaction between the artworks and the visitors should take place. And I hope, I think that our museum is extremely playful from this point of view. And be, because the artworks are um, exhibited in such a um, such um, a way that they can really express all of their value, and at the same time we had a lot of work uh, with the educational department, and this also maybe makes part of this the the um, the. Um, the way of somehow trying to involve the visitor as much as possible. The museum is knowledgeable, and this is the curator's, uh, of course, <laughs> big work, and um, let's say that this is out of question. And at the end, um, the museum should be brave, and I think that all of us, the museum team and the uh, and our team was extremely brave in this process, which took us six years of discussions and um, different positions sometimes, but also the possibility of uh, finding and solving problems. And today, I hope that this museum will be brave, as it's not only a some a space where artworks are exhibited, but it's a, a space where people can go and, and maybe feel emotions and find their own way and their own path to this uh, so many exhibited artworks. So that's maybe I am pleased to go back to this starting point. And of course, Marco and Christina are showing you our huge work. Thank you, Susanna. We go back to some of the last pictures. We, we will cross uh, this, the second floor, the floor of arts, in a very rude way, going through very quickly and uh, leaving some time for questions, if you wish. But uh, from uh, ancient art, which was curated by Margaret Goulet, we have the pleasure to have with us to, today. And uh, through the Langot collection, which was a quotation of the old uh, National, National Gallery, to the rooms of uh, Norway, Norwegian pitch painting, and Cosmorama, which is uh, represented by Renda here, but which is a real installation which shows how artworks were just exposed in drawings from uh, the explorers and uh, the, the painters who visited the very north of the country in uh, the mid-19th uh, century. And uh, the rooms which follow, which show a news of, uh, a news of colors, a news of uh, artworks and, uh, which is related to the architecture of the museum and to the sense of uh, the new and fresh atmosphere we, we breathe in, uh, in Norway. We always did 
visiting the fjords, visiting its nature, and we tried to give back this sense of a fresh new world through the colors we selected, which are actually taken from the paintings themselves. And uh, of course, uh, this is a very important room, the monk's room, which is a, a, a sort of uh, immersed in a very dark bluish black, which gives a, a, unique, a unique way to look at these masterpieces, uh, taking off every sensation of belonging to any time, in my opinion. Around Munch, <coughs> Vitalism. And this is another lovely room and uh, which we developed for commenting the fairy tales artworks, recreating a scenography, like uh, a theater scenography, which is dedicated to the artworks of uh, the fairy tales and to the, and to the young people in particular, which visit the room and find the noises of the little animals and the lights and uh, some uh, and some uh, movements in the atmosphere. Room 65 and uh, the modern part of uh, modern art. And this is another incredible room, from my opinion. It's dedicated to Anna Regan, a female artist, which uh, has in its in her work, uh, a lot of the contents of the previous periods and uh, uh, Norwegian contents of, in art, because it's uh, very social, very related to uh, society, very related to the use of textiles in a, in a new way. In the last part of the museum, everything becomes <coughs> more and more white, and not only the, the walls, but also the supports, and uh, the exhibition elements that uh, helps the visit, and uh, they become more, uh, in a way, abstract. There is this small uh, room dedicated to Sverdefen. There are two rooms dedicated to architecture, and this is especially for Sverdefen, that uh, is like an immersion of uh, the Venice Padillon, and uh, with this big uh, image that it's part of Susanna's work to give the impression to be there. And there are the models of this uh, pavilion. And, and slowly, slowly, towards the end, our contribution to the, to the rooms gets lighter and lighter and uh, gets almost uh, uh, slowly, slowly uh, disappearing. We like uh, this work for having taken part in it as a plural uh, commitment, as a, a, a part of a whole into which uh, design was a, a sort of interpretation of common values and common cultural contents. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for joining us and sharing something about your interesting work. And congratulations for this immense work. And it has been so uh, fascinating to listen to you. And uh, I have some a question for you. Because I was thinking of it must have been very challenging to fully, fully and properly consider both such a, a huge number of artworks and at the same time uh, multiple audiences. So you were mentioning the concept of accessibility which is related to disability but also with the uh, ability to, to talk to different people and different targets. So uh, which was the most difficult task for you, so between the two, dealing with uh, an immense and dense uh, collection, collections actually, or being able to talk to a broad 
such a broad audience? Well, that's a question which will be clarified only in the next uh, months <laughs> <laughs> when people will approach the museum and will yeah. find uh, their answers or their questions to these uh, yeah. ways. We try to give our best uh, for both for both elements. We we changed our design according to universal approach. We changed also during the execution of. Uh, the project many times uh, uh, the design of the benches of the tables to have something more easy more accessible more inclusive after also some uh, tests we had uh, we with different of groups of people prototypes and oh. prototypes we yeah, built. so yeah. this was a very important part uh, of the work actually thank you yeah so please if you have curiosities and questions yeah. Yes, thank you. Oh, um, were you able, or did you at all um, think about using any of the old uh, glass cases from the old uh, museum, the, except for that Munt case? Do you know uh, what I mean? Yes, yes. There is a, a Munt case uh, in, uh, in the first floor, and uh, that's the only one, in fact, because it's very difficult to use uh, old display cases because uh, nowadays they don't have uh, the requirements, the technical conservation requirements which are expected, also in terms of security. Uh, the cases uh, which were used, for example, in the old, um, in the old uh, Applied Arts Museum uh, were, were nice but uh, not very practical to, to, to use and uh, difficult to manage. These uh, new display cases are something different and uh, they offer the best conservation and the security to these uh, wonderful artworks. So it was a necessary mm -hmm. passage. Yeah. Behind this, the beauty of some of these cases, there is a technology that is really high uh, in terms of uh, purity of the hair, in terms of uh, are tightness. Uh, so you can see just the best part, but it's a very complicated machine mm -hmm. and uh, it works. Um, so they, they are very, for example, if you have costumes, it's different. Uh, if you have paper, if you have so we tried also, we have a lot of experience and uh, together with Copion we, we, we study uh, in particular the, uh, every, every case is done for, uh, for a material, for a purpose. So uh, probably the cases on the previous museum were not, uh, so it's interesting what you said. I think you said at least that it, every case is like a machine. Yes. Yes, that's very interesting. It is a machine. It is a, 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 a hidden machine because uh, a display case is not only a box, actually. <coughs> it has uh, some also linguistic elements which make of the box a sort of microcosmos of uh, the room, of the museum, of the museum language too. So it has to put together these different wars of humanistics and sciences in a way. And they are done to protect the artwork. So the main purpose is to uh, take care of the artwork and maybe be able to, uh, to, to show this for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. I can't do this, so first of all, thank you. It was <laughs> amazing to just go into the new world of the process, because you don't just like the work done, you just go to the museum, and it's like, uh, mm -hmm. that's a whole background. So to just be part and could see just uh, <laughs> a little bit of what we have gone through the six years, so that was really a bless. But I, I was just wondering, because we had the pandemic in the middle of the whole process, so was the plan that would take like six years, or was like 
the edges to postpone the whole opening and then change some paints and how was like the, uh, the how new, the pandemic changed yes, the process? Uh, the, the uh, pandemic uh, affected the process uh, of the of uh, all our lives and uh, the museum's life as well, so that. Uh, the opening was uh, foreseen for 2020 mm -hmm. and uh, because of it, uh, it was delayed almost two years. Mm -hmm. Perhaps in a better period also to open its rooms to the people and to the visitors, we hope. But it affected mm -hmm. the process, indeed. But we never stopped to work yeah. during this sixth year. Mm -hmm. I, I think I did uh, hundreds of corona tests. Mm -hmm to be able to, to work uh, in the, on site. Uh, we, we were uh, here for more time than usually because it was not uh, easy to go back in Italy so often. Mm -hmm. So it was, in a way, also a big effort for all of us also for the pandemic. Mm -hmm. yeah, I just wondered, was it me? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I noticed that some of the rooms look a little bit familiar in the way that they are similar to the National Gallery, uh, which a lot of Norwegians feel strongly about that is now abandoned. So mm -hmm. I was wondering if that was part, that's something you kept in mind. I'm thinking especially of the monk room, the way the pictures were hung, and the uh, proportions of the glass ceilings and all of it. Because a lot of Norwegians did not agree with this change into the museum. Yes, that's a very important consideration about uh, consistency of the values. In a way, the monk room was uh, a shared value, and uh, we started from, uh, um, from uh, what it was before, but uh, you have to know that uh, this room is much wider, so the works uh, have... Uh, this is thanks to the architecture of uh, uh, Klaus Schubert, not uh, uh, from our interior work. And uh, there was a lot of study by the curators to display in this wonderful way the rooms and, uh, sorry, the artworks in the room. And um, what we reached together was the use of uh, this very dark color, also for terms of conservation, because the screen is uh, an artwork which needs uh, a lot of protection and uh, for many reasons uh, has to be uh, um, exposed to a very reduced light. So these uh, colors help the appreciation with the lower light and also the appreciation of uh, the universal uh, values of monks' art. But the, the first thing that we did when we came to Oslo in um, 2016 was to visit the previous museums mm -hmm. and uh, to learn from that museum because uh, and for us it was a starting point. And just a simple idea of uh, behind the Langard room to, repl to um, you can say, replicate the interior of the National Gallery. So it's like uh, we bring a part of the National Gallery, the new museum, for this reason, to have a memory of, to remember the story, why now, I mean, all the, all the steps. So this is a new museum, what comes from a long story. And different lives. Mm. Yeah. I just wondered, in these glass cases where the, for, for instance, the new design, the Norwegian design, were based beautifully, is it possible, it will be possible to change the exhibition? Sure. Yeah. Yes. So it's meant to be changed. Uh, Denise has already a lot of plan for that <laughs> room. <laughs> And uh, it was one of the requests that uh, the exhibition, the interior, can change. So, in a way, they are, uh, uh, there are some systems that, um, that give the possibility to change the height of all the, um, the shelves, for example, or to, to arrange the interior in many different ways. This is one of the most uh, flexible rooms because it will change. In, 
in time. Um, I have a curiosity, um, because uh, due to many contingencies over the last years, um, sustainability is becoming, became like the center aspect of every major architecture project as well. So I was wondering if you had uh, um, to face this as well, and to, in, in the choice of the materials, for example, or the structures, or the furniture, if you had to pay attention to um, sustainability and, yes, Yes, sustainability is, uh, is always a central aspect uh, in the nowadays uh, productions, especially in architecture, of course, and uh, at the urban scale more than uh, at an interior scale. But the use of materials was especially selected uh, to avoid uh, toxic uh, substances, to uh, toxic outgassing, also not only for the conservation of uh, of the of the of the ambient, but also for the conservation of the objects themselves. So we went through very strict processes of selection of uh, materials, processes in which the uh, voice of sustainability was uh, an important one. In, in the museum field, is very um, we you can't we can't use all the materials that we want and uh, they should be audit tested, they should be approved, uh, so it's, and they should have a durability. So the sustainability, it's, uh, we should see through the durability in a way, because we have chosen material that uh, they'll be strong enough to resist, and uh, at the same time they're safe for the artwork, because we can't use, uh, most of the things that are on the market, because they can be really... So mainly we, we use metal, painted metal, or uh, corian, there is a new material that is more, uh, uh, let's say, synthetic, but uh, stable for the objects. So we, we study a lot the material that uh, we are able to use, and not only here, but always we, we should uh, take care of these aspects. It's very important. Uh, you have this uh, kind of almost magic lighting. Could you say a bit more about the use of lighting? The use of lighting is one of the mysteries of uh, life. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, actually, it's something which is uh, very controlled throughout the process. And uh, lighting gives the interpretation of uh, the spaces. Uh, we had these systems which were already provided uh, within the <coughs> architecture, and uh, so we had uh, different kind of uh, lighting. The ones which came from uh, the ceilings, which are skylights or different uh, uh, sets of uh, uh, trucks and spots, or the ones which are inside the display cases. For example, in this picture behind me, the Monk Room, you will see that uh, the central skylight, which is an artificial skylight, by the way, is uh, possible to regulate its intensity and uh, its uh, way of uh, cold or warm uh, tone colors uh, in different ways. But uh, this skylight was uh, was not used in this room because of the necessity to, to, to be very low with intensity of light. So in this case, Massimo Yarussi played uh, much more with uh, uh, different lightings which give uh, a spot on the artwork, trying to avoid uh, uh, bad, shape, bad uh, reflections and bad uh, shapes, sh shadows. And, uh, and uh, for example, in, in all the rooms, there is a story behind. And uh, the use of light is very related to conservation needs. Mm -hmm. So that uh, intensity in particular comes and goes higher or lower in accord to, in accordation to, to, these, uh, requ to these requirements. But of course, uh, it's, a very, uh, it's, a very, it's a very intense and accurate job which is under the final result.
And if I may add something, the light is it's sometimes even more complicated than the design part because you don't know until the end the results. And sometimes you have surprises. I, I have in mind uh, just a small detail in, in room 18, the uh, embroidery room. There is a small, very small uh, portrait, embroidered portrait. And uh, we did the case just for these objects. And uh, we knew, we saw these objects many times, and uh, we, we knew that was a very particular object. And the light was started for this. But when we, when we placed the object inside the case, we were like, there is something missing. So we start with Massimo to move the light around this small uh, portrait, and the face was totally different. Mm -hmm. And the expression of the, uh, of the mouth was totally different. So we decided to change everything and to move the light in another position because the idea that we had at the beginning was not good enough. So it's, uh, the light, it's even more, um, it gives also, it can give a lot to, to the exhibition and to the artwork. I mean, I mean, it's one of the most exquisite rooms in the museum, the embroidery room. Yes. Oh, yes. Indeed. Yeah, thank you. Um, did you have a picture of the multimedia room? I think that's what it's called. I haven't seen it, but I've heard about it. It's a, a room maybe with the um, weather report mm -hmm. and... 25. Yeah. 25. Do you have any picture not, of that? Not with that? us. Not with us. Oh. Not, not with but us. Can you talk about that, how you designed that room? Yes, yes sure. It's a very small room which we tried to develop like uh, a multiplied and uh, uh, sort of uh, optical uh, effect room that using mi a mirror, mirrors in the back of it to reply uh, its length and uh, the, the sense of surprise and astonishment and uh, having these screens uh, uh, along, uh, the, the, long, uh, along the, the, the long walls with, uh, um, with a ceiling like this and using a little bit of uh, textile to absorb uh, sound and to, 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 to avoid uh, acoustic reflections because uh, from the beginning we didn't know if it would be with uh, acoustic sound, with sound or without. And so the, the, we prepared the shell for this uh, installation to, to be made in a sort of a colored way, in a sort of a fancy way. I'm excited. <laughs> but there are many installations uh, like this, also immersive installations, for, the, for, for, for example, in the fashion room, uh, there is a, a very intense uh, preparation, and uh, we had this team of Marduvit, and uh, they they prepared, they composed some uh, musics, some plots for this uh, purpose, and some of them are really exciting. And uh, there are many parts of the museum where you can find uh, different installations like that, always different one from the other. Yes, I, I would first like to say, needless to say really, but as a <coughs> representative of the museum, I just want to say that these years have been extremely rewarding. Co collaborating with both your studios has been enormously rewarding. And um, just as to, to give you an example of how, for instance, um, Susanna Lero has worked. I mean, do pay attention to the subtleties of the graphic design aspects of the, the collection display. Um, and just one example, when you arrive in room 21, the, the room that is about design from 1950 to the present, you'll notice that each um, title in each case is unique. It has a name, and that name is unique for that specific case. And that is because Susanna has 
based her unique design of that title on a graphic design exhibit in that particular case. Mm -hmm. So you have there quite a sophisticated example of how the graphic design of the exhibition merges, converges with the design content of the display. Thank you, Denise. That, that was a very, very strong and exciting exercise in typography and in somehow um, designing each title, following the, the style and the mood and the fashion of, of the time. So each title is designed uh, following an, uh, some, uh, a sample, um, a design um, object which is in the case. So that, that was very playful for us. A lot of work, but extremely <laughs> very playful. <laughs> Yes, so I'm, I'm the other representative from the museum here, so I feel um, called on to say something. And um, it was really, it was really, I felt I learned a lot listening to you, even though we have been working together for six years. So I, I felt so moved. But um, what I wanted to say was, um, you were totally right, Michael. You referred to the hundreds of meetings and why you were selected. Um, it was very much because we felt that we knew that we could have that kind of dialogue, that creative dialogue. And uh, not many companies would have coped with the, I don't know how many people you have been forced to work with. <laughs> so, <laughs> something like that. Seven, yes, uh, around seven, seven people. people because uh, it was not it was the different kinds of curators. Curators were working with the collection, curators working with education, project managers, the directors, uh, the the museum technicians, conservators, etc. etc. And uh, and to be listening to all of these people with all the demands and sometimes with crossing demands and with crossing preferences and, uh, and wishes and that's not an easy job. So I want to thank you for listening and for managing everything. <laughs> and uh, it was, it's been so rewarding to work with you. It's been really great. And to the question about the, the month room, uh, it's uh, actually that uh, the hanging is a bit different. It's, it's the same works, of course, many of the same works. But if you notice uh, to the right, in the bench, there is one of the examples of, uh, of the playful uh, things, because uh, it's meant primarily for kids, and uh, you can, they know instinctively what to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, I'd like to know uh, the furniture. Did you make them in Italy or where did you produce them? Or different places in Europe? Something in Norway? Or? Um, the furniture was part of, uh, uh, of the uh, products made by Gopion, which is an Italian company. And uh, they, they produced them mostly in Italy. Mm -hmm. But, uh, for example, all the, all the benches were produced in Italy. But uh, for something, they, uh, there were also some Norwegian companies which were involved from, uh, for example, also from the cases, from uh, some uh, uh, com com complete completing works and uh, from some... Uh, uh, of these benches. And, uh, the, yes, the wool of uh, these benches, Christina says, is uh, right from Norway. Okay. It is a uh, Norwegian wool. You we know, use the. Uh, yeah. We used, uh, to, to use the material, the, the, yeah, yeah. the birch and the and the wool that belongs to. Yeah. To the history, to the history of, of uh, Nordic yeah. design, because uh, mm -hmm. we wanted to introduce in the museum something coming from uh, the homes, perhaps, mm -hmm. or the uh, the idea of uh, 
common values about materials. Mm. Mm. So it's a teamwork, it's not just yeah. Italian yeah. Norwegian. It's so it's not, like a, and, uh, it's not like a company in Italy make like furnitures for museums and so on. No, no. It's, it's designed. It's, it's designed by us yeah, and, and produced, uh, by produced by them. They yeah. they have different laboratories and uh, they have uh, they have different competencies and uh, some other works uh, like for example the graphic prints and the graphic uh, works were done by another Consis. Norwegian company, Consis, mm. here in Oslo. Made a very good job. Mm. So according to different tasks. Uh, this, uh, and uh, to different tenders, uh, the answer was uh, to produce uh, here or there. Yeah. yeah. For example, in, in, in terms of graphics, we have um, <coughs> what, what we call the thematic <coughs> texts, which have been silk screened on the walls. Yeah. And this was quite a Hot. challenging <laughs> theme, as it was very difficult to find as let's say that the we our idea was to have um, texts which could really last in in the museum and and not to have to add other panels on on the walls. So we wanted to have texts which would melt with and, and really make be integral integ make part of the of the wall. But then the only way to to obtain that result was to see the screen, and it was quite difficult to find who could do that in so, such large scale. And at the end, um, an Italian company um, was able to to do yeah. it, and yeah. they they shipped all the frames, and it was a big work. But mm -hmm. I think the result is quite interesting and unusual. Can I ask you about that question there? Um, when you change your work then, you're going to have to silk screen over. Yep. You have to paint over and silk screen over. For if, a, you, if you want to change the whole text, of course, you have to right. over paint yeah. and silk screen right. again. Okay. Yes. But, but the little the, tombstone labels, those are just the labels are the labels are on a on a metal sheet, okay. and uh, there is a, a a vinyl film on top that can be replaced in time. Very easily. Uh, Very the thematic quickly. tests are not supposed to be changed so often, and so for this reason we we try to because the durability that we mentioned before this was uh, a request. So for some of the uh, choices uh, we were. Uh, we will find something more stronger. And for, for other things like labels that we know that uh, curators love to change mm -hmm. content, <laughs> we find an easy, an easy way to replace it. So I hope you can go to the museum very soon and enjoy the visits. And sorry. <laughs> I just have a question because he, he hit me. Uh, I haven't been at the second floor yet. As I told you, I was in the museum on <coughs> the 1st of June, uh, the opening for the museum friends. And um, I've only had the time to be in the first floor. So I really look forward uh, to, to see the other uh, rooms. And about the monk, the monk room, what hit me was, I, because I saw this uh, piece of wood, maybe, the color, and uh, it reminds me what I was playing with when I was in the kindergarten. And we played with this piece of wood in every color, and yes. it was very, very funny. And, uh, but what, what uh, I see in these pictures, because you said, you got four words and uh, one was playful, yep. or to be playful. And, um, and what I see is that uh, in those pieces you have just the same colors and on the paintings of Monk. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it is on purpose, I don't know, maybe accidentally, uh, if it is for the children, 
to recognize the colors in the paintings and then uh, be more familiar with the paintings. Or also because at that period, Monk used more colorful, uh, yeah, he painted more colorful because he was in a better uh, state of mind. So, so yeah. Those, uh, what is the question? <laughs> uh, the <laughs> question is that uh, uh, there is a, a painting by Savinio, an Italian uh, painter, made in the 1920s, which is called uh, uh, The Games of the Prince. And uh, it shows uh, some objects, metaphysical objects, which stay on a beach and the seaside, and uh, they look like uh, these little objects here, in a way. <laughs> this is a coincidence, mm -hmm. yeah. yes. perhaps. Yes. <laughs> there are, in several rooms, you can find uh, objects you can play with or interact mm -hmm. with. And of course, uh, there is always a relation with the artworks exhibited. Mm -hmm. in the they room. have been so designed... I don't know in this case what you do with this. They have been designed by a very, very, very capable group of the Na National Museum, mm -hmm. the educational group, mm -hmm. which includes uh, experts and artists, and they, and they have made uh, wonderful objects uh, here and there, which are a show in the museum, actually. So not uh, all of the beautiful things that you will see in this museum are because of us. There are also <laughs> lots of us people that, and we don't have all the answer because it's a, such a big uh, group of people that made it, that uh, I hope you can uh, also ask them uh, when you are there. What's the meaning of actually for us it's still a challenge sometimes to understand, but we have seen some kids immediately understand what to do. Mm -hmm. So probably it's more for them sometimes than we are too much uh, straight in our ideas. Thank you all for this interesting uh, conversation and debate. There were many, many questions, so I guess the curiosity, uh, well, you, are, you can't wait to go there. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for answering all these questions and for this very, very interesting intervention. Thank you.